Hello everyone, RogueFox here, and welcome back to another Minecraft tutorial. Today, I'll be showing you a few different hidden inputs you can use for your secret redstone builds. Recently, we built a couple of hidden staircases, a hidden door, and you better believe there's a lot more of that to come on this channel. Now, normally, I tell you to hook those up to a hidden input. Now, I don't show you how to do that, so I figured I'd show you how to do that today. So, in today's tutorial, I will show you a few different designs that you can use to go along with your hidden builds. Design number one is very simple. This will be using a lever for our input. And what we do is we come to this block right here with our sticky piston right below. What you would do is place down your lever, flip your lever, that will break off so we can pick it right back up, leaving no evidence behind of anything being there. And then this redstone lamp indicates that we indeed did get some sort of redstone signal from that switch there. Now imagine that was hooked up to a hidden door. So your hidden door would be open, and then when you would want to close it back up, you would put a lever down again, flip it, and then there we go, it would close right back up. For design number one, this is all you need right here. So what we have is a sticky piston facing up with a block on its face like that, a block right here with a piece of redstone dust on top, and then we place a block right above it, which would be your wall or anything that you would use to cover that up. So we get our lever, this will power this block here, which will power the redstone, which will then power our piston. Just like that. Now, what we want to do to make this a hidden input, we would hook this up to a T flip-flop, just like this. And if you aren't too familiar with the T flip-flop, then let me quickly show you how to make one. For this T flip-flop design, all we want is a dropper facing up like this, and then we want a dropper facing across, come down, place a dropper facing down, and then we run a hopper into this bottom dropper right there. So it should look like that. And then what we want to do is grab one item and place it into our bottom dropper. So let's place that one down. And then we would want our input to come into the top dropper up here like this. And then we also want to pull our redstone output from this top dropper as well. So you can see you have the comparator going into the redstone lamp. So if we press this, there we go. We get an output which lights up the redstone lamp. And then if we press it again, it turns it off. Now that you got the crash course on how to make a T flip-flop, let's go back to design number one. So as I mentioned, we would be hooking this up to a T flip-flop. So we have our T flip-flop right here that we just built. Then we would put a piece of redstone dust on top of this dropper right here, which would be this block right here. And then we pull a signal out with our comparator right there. And there we have it. There's design number one for our hidden input. Design number two is just a variation of design number one. It's still using a lever for an input, but instead of the sticky piston pushing the block up, it'll push it towards us. So what I mean is if we place our lever down like that, flip our lever, the block will push from the wall, not the floor this time. And then if we turn it off, it does the same exact thing. And this is how you build design number two. I'm not going to go too much into detail. It's pretty self-explanatory right here. All we would do is place our lever down like that. Same concept. There we go. And then we would hook this up to a T flip-flop. So this block right here with the redstone dust would be this block right here. And then you can see we have this hooked up to our T flip-flop down below. We pull our signal out once again from that top dropper and then run it in to whatever it is we're trying to power. Designs 3, 4, and 5 are all going to be variations of each other. As you can tell, they are slightly different, but they all do the same thing. They're all going to be using the hopper minecart. And then our input is going to be hidden within the floor. This is perfect for any input you don't want around the wall. And let's say you have a big old open floor. This type of design would be perfect. So what we would do, we come up to here, throw our item in. You can see we get a redstone signal. And then let's say this opened up a hidden trap door. So we would fall down below. And then when we want to close it above us, we reach right into our hopper minecart here. And then pull it out. Our signal turns off. And then our door would close right above us. This design is super simple to make. All you would do is place a detector rail right below your floor level. This would be our floor. And then what you would do is get a hopper minecart, place it on top of the detector rail like that, and then grab a comparator and run it out just like this. That way when we throw something down, it picks it up and then gives us a redstone signal. Like I said earlier, designs four and five are slight variations of design number three. One difference is that we have the hopper minecart within the block this time for both designs. Now, I'm not going to show you how to do that in this video. I did show you how to do that in the Hidden Furnace Entrance tutorial, which I'll post a link to in the description below. And I'll probably throw a card that will pop up in the top corner. 
Now the only difference is where we're pulling out our redstone signal from. So over here we had a detector rail that our comparator was picking up from. But from this one we have our comparator coming out from our hopper right here which will then give us an output. So there we go. And then over here we have our hopper but this time we're pulling our signal from our chest which is what I used in the hidden furnace tutorial. So in the same way it works just like that. Design number six, we'll be using redstone dust for our input. So how this works, we get our redstone dust, place it on top of this block right here. That breaks off, just like in our first two designs. And as indicated by the redstone lamp, we indeed get a redstone signal. And like design number one and two, we place our redstone dust on top again to shut it off. To build this, you want to place four blocks in a pattern just like this. Now this is going to be our floor right here. This is going to be our wall. So what we want to do is grab a repeater, run a repeater into this block back here, and then let's grab a lever, place it on the back of our wall, and turn that on. That way, when we place redstone dust down, we're getting us some power. Now, to finish this off, let's go ahead. We want to place a sticky piston facing up right here, like that. We want to put that block back, and then what we want to do is come down below this repeater, come two blocks down, knock that center block out, and then place down some redstone dust. That way, when we place our redstone dust down, it's going to power this repeater, which is going to power this block, which quickly powers this redstone, powering that block, powering that piston, and there you go, you get the idea. And, of course, in order to make this a hidden input, we would want to hook this up to a T flip-flop. Now, like the first two designs, we have our T flip-flop right here, and then that would be this block right there for our top dropper. And finally, we have our last design for the day. This will also be using a redstone dust for our input, but I had a little fun with this one. And I'm actually making use of the redstone burnout clock. So let me show you how this is going to work. We place our redstone dust right there. You can see that's going to burn out, and then our power turns off. And then if we want to turn it back on, let's go ahead and break it. And then we get a signal again. Now, you may be wondering what that's good for. So, let's go ahead. Let's say we have a block right there. That's our wall. And then, let's say we have a hidden chest below. We want that to be revealed. Place it down. Boom, that opens up. And then when we're all done, we just break it. And then it'll close right back up. To build this, all you would do is grab yourself a redstone torch. And wherever your floor block is going to be that you want to use to power, place a redstone torch on the back side like that, right under the wall. And then from here, you want to run a repeater set to two ticks into your T flip-flop. And then what you want to do is place another repeater running into the side of that one and set that to four ticks. And then all we do is line this up with a bunch of redstone dust. There we go. And then when we place our dust down, you can see we get our burnout. The signal goes out, and then when we break it again, it turns back on. And there you have it, folks. Seven hidden input designs that you can use for your secret or hidden redstone builds. This is the end of our tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. This has been Rogue Fox, and I'm out. See you later.